Hi, I'm Mark, and on this channel I talk about Brexit and UK politics, and some people still talk about Brexit benefits. In January 2020, after months of bitter wrangling, the UK formally exited the EU with an agreed 11-month transition period, enabling both sides to negotiate a new trade deal. In the following year, 2021, goods export hit an all-time low, dropping by 40.7%. That's the biggest tumble since records began. Import value then grew in 22 by 11% to just over £53 billion, with a rise in imports from countries both in and outside of the EU. However, this is widely believed to be predominantly due to globally rising costs rather than signaling economic growth. The UK's Office for Budget Responsibility, the OBR, warned that the long-term impact of Brexit would be worse for the UK economy than COVID-19, predicting it would reduce GDP by as much as 4%, with the pandemic cutting it by a further 2%. It's estimated that in the fourth quarter of 22, it had fallen even by 5.5%. The Center for Economic Policy Research estimated that Brexit raised consumer prices, costing the average household £250 more on food alone. And meanwhile, 80% of SMEs say costs have increased since Brexit, particularly to import goods and recruit staff. And other business challenges created by Brexit include tariffs for British exports, disruption in supply chains, decrease in EU workers and unstable confidence in the EU market in the UK market. And the knock-on effect of these challenges on businesses has been considerable. 22 saw a rise in insolvencies, which has continued to surge into 23, with insolvencies reaching their highest level since records began. But what are the Brexit benefits? Are there any silver linings for UK businesses post-Brexit? Well, the government has a 105-page document on the benefits of Brexit, which was released at the beginning of 2022. You must read that one. And former Prime Minister Boris Johnson was quoted as saying that Brexit will create a future in which we don't sit passively outside the European Union, but seize the incredible opportunities that our freedom presents and use them to build back better than ever before, making our businesses more competitive and our people more prosperous. Hmm. What are those possible Brexit benefits, he means? Former Treasury economist and uh, fellow at the Institute of Economic Affairs, Julian uh, Jessup, says that leaving the EU has reduced their vulnerability to internal shocks in the market. The ONS agreed, saying the UK may be more resilient to global supply chain disruption than other economies due to supply changes made uh, because of Brexit. The ONS also released figures in 22 showing that businesses had moved to using more UK suppliers since the end of the transition period that followed the country's withdrawal from the EU. That was a little boost for UK businesses. And this trend has continued in 23, with nearly three quarters of businesses reporting that they were able to get all their goods they needed within the UK without any disruption. But there are still some transition periods. And after Brexit, the UK would be less restricted by some EU regulations. It's argued that a positive result of Brexit has been an ability to trade more freely with non-EU markets, for example, the US and Australia. And uh, the UK wanted to put in place new trade agreements with many non-EU countries around the world. Emerging markets such as Brazil, China and South Africa account for more consumer spending every year. And the fall of the pound makes British products cheaper for international markets, which could make them more appealing and benefit exporters. It doesn't benefit the people anyway. Simplifying the reporting burdens for small and medium companies is another point they brought up. The government is reviewing the thresholds retained in EU law and the filing requirements for businesses that file micro-entity accounts, aiming to reduce the reporting burden on many small companies. But the EU did the same recently. And in May 22, it issued a press release saying that 350 EU rules were to be ditched, creating simpler, more flexible and transparent procurement. And the government said these would level the playing field for SMEs and drive economic growth across the UK. While the government maintains its positive stance on Brexit, UK exporters remain cautiously optimistic. 
Brexit still remains a hurdle. It's become a structural hurdle for UK experts. That was uh, said by the alliance that's a German um, um, insurer, Trade Center of Economic Research, Anna Boata. She notes that in 21, UK exports fell in the volume at a time when the most countries were enjoying a post-lockdown surge in trade. And with insolvencies in England and Wales at their highest level since rackets began, SMEs should be keeping Brexit consequences firmly front of mind, making business cash flow a top priority and taking steps to avoid customer bad debt. But we have some optimistics here. The German-British business community continues to successfully defy the relatively weak economic development in the United Kingdom. The results of the recent autumn survey by the British German uh, Chamber of Commerce and Industry show that based on the entire British economy, only just under a quarter of companies have positive expectations for the future. And that's still a lot. In contrast, more than 40% expect their own future business prospects to improve. As a result of the positive business expectations for their own business, Around 40% of companies also plan to increase their investments and hire new employees. The main reason for investment is the importance of the British market that still cannot be dis uh, disregarded. However, the advantages of the United Kingdom as a production location, they say, should not be ignored. At least 30% want to invest in such activities, maybe because of the government announcements. Political uncertainties and lack of demand are currently the biggest challenges for companies, followed by trade barriers, a shortage of skilled workers and the wage costs. Compared to six months ago, high energy costs are no longer such a big problem, though. The improvement in the relationship between the EU and the United Kingdom that has been racketed since the Windsor Agreement, you know, that was concluded in spring 23, and is now viewed more positively from the business perspective, as more than 40% now expect a measurable positive effect on their own economic activities in the UK. And current inflationary pressure are still a major geopolitical challenge for many, and a special one in the UK though. However, supply chain problems and energy and raw material bottlenecks are currently no longer seen as being a, a big a, a, as a big global problem as they were six months ago. As part of this study, 51 web-based interviews were conducted with companies in the German-British uh, economy that are operationally active in the United Kingdom. But I also have to briefly mention a new development with Boris Johnson that is making the rounds in Germany today and has nothing to do with that. But in a recent COVID hearing, former British Prime Minister Boris Johnson's WhatsApp messages were made public, revealing controversial views and a chaotic government at the height of the pandemic. The messages were exchanged between Johnson and his former close advisors Dominic Cummings and Lee Kane. You will remember those names from my videos two years ago. According to OpenDemocracy.net, one of the most shocking revelations has, was Johnson's view that the pandemic is nature's way of dealing with old people. He made the statement when he resisted the implementation of lockdowns. The news also showed Johnson questioning the existence of long COVID, calling it pure Gulf War syndrome. What an ass. I know exactly what I'm talking about with long COVID. The leaked messages also revealed a dysfunctional government with Johnson's capricious decision-making described by Kane as quite exhausting. And uh, Cabinet Secretary Simon Case expressed his displeasure, noting that Johnson cannot lead and they cannot support him with this approach. Case uh, also noted that Johnson's strategic direction changes daily, making it impossible for the team to accomplish anything. And this kind of yeah, just confirms what we all expected, how it would look like inside Downing Street at the time of Boris Johnson. But if you want to know more, the next video is right here in the end screen. I'll see you there. I'll be back.